Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon, wherever you are and whenever you are. Thank you for joining us from this Giant Dragons video. Today we're going to talk about something that I came up with here recently, and it really has to do with uh, improving myself as a GM. I am excited to go ahead and try this with some of my games. You know, a lot of times we'll talk about uh, living worlds. We want things to feel like we're actually in a world, not playing a video game. We don't want the NPC just standing there waiting to interact with us. We want it to feel like we're making a difference, but also the world should be going on around us. <clears throat> with that in mind, uh, it has been something uh, in past campaigns, both of mine and those I've run or played, uh, where it really just feels like all the action is centered on us. Nothing happens without the players moving forward. Uh, that isn't quite a living world. It is a shortcoming and something that I think a lot of us could do better at, including myself. So I was uh, recently looking over the uh, playtest package from Blades in the Dark, John Harper's new game they just had kickstarted. Uh, congratulations, John. He did a great job. and looking forward to that but you had something really neat in there which was a countdown clock and i saw how it works specifically with your rules but i also looked at it and said you know this is something i could use in my other games be it uh, dungeons and dragons fifth edition pathfinder cyberpunk doesn't really matter it comes in handy to help things go along so just to give people an idea of what i'm talking about I've got an image here that I did up real quick in uh, Photoshop. So this will go ahead and show you kind of what we're talking about. You'll see I've got a circle segmented almost like a pizza pie there. And uh, when we're using this, the concept is actually pretty simple. Let's say you've got a campaign that's not a one shot. It's not, you know, going to be four session long. It's going to be something that lasts for a while. And the idea here is that there's usually going to be at least one big bad, maybe several big bads in your campaign. And they aren't going to be waiting around for your characters to take action. They have their own goals, their own motives, their own missions. So what I've done here is I kind of took the idea from John and uh, extrapolated a little bit that, uh, you know, we have a uh, necromancer who wants to raise a, an undead army there's probably a lot of things that he has to do to get that in order you know he's got to get components he's got to go you know find the proper scroll or a spell book that's going to give him the spell that he needs he maybe needs to get an ancient artifact or two he needs to recruit cohorts he needs to find a burial ground or ancient battlefield and each of those things is kind of a step and so each of the items here on this wheel, which, you know, it could be two sections. It could be three sections, four sections. I just did this one up uh, real quick. But what had happened in the game is that each time we go through and say, okay, you know, the characters have run their session and X amount of time has passed. You know, while they were busy, uh, doing a side quest maybe to go through a temple and uh, loot his riches, the uh, necromancer had found their spell book. So that's going to fill in one of these areas. And uh, they get word of what's going on in this ancient text, and so now they know that they've got something to go against. Uh, but the next mission comes along and the ancient uh, necromancer is trying to get hold of an ancient artifact. So they kind of have a little race and they get there first. They loot the temple, defeat the dragon, whatever, before that happens. So he doesn't get that uh, artifact. So this doesn't get filled in. Uh, the next time they're off to save a princess. Well, while they're busy saving a princess, the necromancer is still working. He finds another artifact that'll do what he needs to do. Well, that just fills in another area. Then something else happens. Maybe they stop him. Maybe they get defeated by his minions and they don't stop him from getting a rare component. So that's going to fill in. Now, once this whole area is filled in, 
however big you decide to make your countdown clock, as I'm calling it here, uh, that's when something happens. This is all toward a goal. Your uh, group's uh, mission is sort of to try and stop this from filling up and maybe even work it backwards a little bit. Uh, you know, he got the component. Maybe they sneak in later and they steal the component. So this goes back to being white. I, yeah, this is something I would typically draw on a sheet of paper and fill in with pencil, use an eraser if I need to. But uh, just for purpose of sharing it here, I went ahead and did it in Photoshop. I think it's a neat idea. It helps me as a GM to get the idea that, uh, you know, the mission that the characters is doing is not the same necessarily as uh, what they're fighting. It turns it around and makes me focus on, hey, what's going on while these guys are doing that? And yes, the focus is still going to be the players, but in the living world, in the living campaign, things have to be happening independent of the players. And that's where I came up with this idea, really, as I said, from Blades in the Dark, and I know that there was a little something like that uh, taken from damage in the Apocalypse World and Dungeon World series. So <clears throat> I don't know that I've seen it anywhere else. It's definitely something I want to start using more. <laughs> Apparently somebody's here. Uh, and I'm curious if anyone else has seen it. Have you seen it in another game? Have you tried something like this? Uh, you know, the way I see it working is that I could have one or I could have many of these. I can use them both for something against the players as well as something the players are trying to do. Are they trying to mass forces? Are they trying to build a new keep? Or are they trying to unlock the secrets of some ancient ritual? These countdown clocks can come in quite handy. Just make sure you've got your notes in order so you don't lose track of which is which. And if you do miss it, it's not something that you can't go back and fill in between game time. It's also not as important to go, oh no, I've got to go back and figure this out. Because as long as everyone's still having fun at the table, that's what it's all about. I do hope the idea uh, takes off as well as I think it will. And uh, definitely, as I said, I'm curious to see if anyone else has tried this or seen this or what your thoughts on it are. Go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And until next time, have a good day and keep on gaming. Bye.